Okay, so those new to the channel, I call all my subscribers dragons. Divine, righteous, almighty, greats, overachieving, never slacking, was smoking all my dragons. And today we got foods that are banned in Europe, but not the U.S. Original link in the description. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we're going to go ahead and hop right into this one. Let's go. To get started, some of you might know that I have another channel called Mega Projects, which is all about mega projects. If you don't subscribe to that, please do well. By popular demand, I wanted to cover some things on that channel that weren't quite mega enough for it. So I present to you a new channel called Side Projects, which is no longer that new, but hey, here we are. It covers secret Soviet space weapons, World War II's greatest airplanes, histories, lost treasures, and the movement of London Bridge from London to a random town in America. Stuff like that. New videos three times a week on side projects. So if you are thinking you don't get enough videos from me, well, problem solved. There is a link below. The European Union is as suspicious as ever when it comes to foodstuffs containing chemicals, unnatural dyes, and meat treated with synthetic growth hormones. Since since 1981, the EU has had stringent rules for the importation of food to its markets, and those rules have only gotten... Well, that's good, you know? It's good that they're, they're strict about it and they're on top of it and protecting the people, you know? That's, that's what's needed stricter with time. In 1989, it banned as many as six growth hormones, launching a trade dispute which has lasted 30 years and counting. In 2003, it permanently banned one synthetic growth hormone while provisionally banning five others, and a whole host of dyes, chemicals, and preservatives are persona non grata in the EU as well. From hard-shelled candy delights, milk, dyed salmon, and beef and pork treated with all kinds of hormones, here are 10 foods banned in parts of the European Union that are not banned in the United States. States. Number 10. Skittles. While not banned in the entire EU, Skittles are banned in Sweden and Norway for containing yellow dye number 5 and 6. In most parts of the EU... Not surprised, honestly. I'm not going to be surprised with any candy. You know, to be real, to be real. You all that's required of the Wrigley Company, a division of Mars Inc., is to include a disclaimer suggesting that the candy could cause adverse health effects and hyperactivity. Still, it's thought that these dyes can cause allergic reactions in some people, and FDA tests have shown that red dye 40, yellow 5, and yellow 6 all contain cancer-causing agents like benzodine and 4-amino biphenyl. And the levels released in the body could be much higher than the FDA is reporting, thanks to the fact that routine tests tend to find less of these cancer-causing carcinogens than when they actually pass through the colon. Still, we've never heard of anyone in the U.S. being hospitalized after eating Skittles. But maybe that's just what they want you to think. Number 9. RBGA Taste the rainbow, huh? Mm. Or taste the doctor. H or RBST milk. The main reason cited by the European Union for banning both recombinant bovine growth hormone and its synthetic counterpart, recombinant bovine soma metropin, RBST, officially is due to animal cruelty concerns, but there may be other adverse health effects linked to the use of these hormones. Both RBGH and RBST have been tenuously linked to the developments of certain cancers. In addition to that, the FDA found that further study would have to be conducted to determine the impact these hormones would have on the liver and other organs. But in addition to the potential adverse health effects of RBGH in humans, cattle treated with the growth hormone are more likely to come down with a nasty case of mastitis, an inflammatory reaction in the outer tissue caused by infection from microorganisms. As a result of this disease, cattle in the US are treated with antibiotics, eliminating mastitis infections, but potentially causing other problems further down the line. Although the World Health Organization is primarily concerned about the over-reliance and overuse of antibiotics in humans claiming that this could lead to the evolution of a superbug, 90% of antibiotics consumed aren't taken by humans. They're fed to otherwise healthy animals. And experts warn that this could lead to our livestock essentially becoming superbug factories. That's the bacteria they harbor. It sounds like, a, like one of them horror, sci-fi, strange... Let's be honest, man. We live in a science project. Let, let, we're all, we're all, we're all uh, lab mice. Let's just be honest here. Let's be honest. At least in America, let's be honest. You know, the truth will set you free become more and more resistant to antibiotics, it's only a matter of time before these traits get passed on to bacteria that are harmful to humans. Number 8. Papaya, corn, and soy. The genetically modified organisms or GMOs used in veterans- I wasn't expecting him to say papaya or corn, to be honest. Wait, 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 did that matter? 
Is that what he said? Coin? Corn? Area. <laughs> that are harmful to humans. Number eight, papaya, corn, and soy. The genetically modified organisms or GMOs used in vegetables and fruits in the US have allegedly been linked to some nasty health problems. However, whether this is actually the case, we just don't know. While it is true that the US treats its produce and fruit with GMOs to make them more resistant to different diseases, and this can be largely beneficial, more research does need to be conducted in order to determine which of these is harmful to humans. Unlike the US and the FDA, the EU takes a far more cautious approach when it comes to approving GMOs, meaning that they must pass rigorous tests and environmental monitoring before they are deemed safe for consumption by citizens in their countries. However, even their system is not perfect. Recently, a batch of GMO-treated papaya began circulating through EU-controlled markets. The culprits appear to be farmers in Thailand who mass-produced GMO-treated crops. Number seven, breads. <sighs> Man, I mean, I don't even know what to say. It's like you know, you know, you just know not like things are just weird. Everything just feels strange, especially nowadays. What we eat, what we listen to, everything just feels strange, man. Citizens in their countries. However, even their system is not perfect. Recently, a batch of GMO treated papaya began circulating through EU controlled markets. The culprits appear to be farmers in Thailand who mass produced GMO treated crops. Number seven, breads containing azodicarbonamide. Azodicarbonamide, ADA for short, is a chemical used to bleach breads in order to increase their shelf life. Recently, companies like Subway, McDonald's, and other fast food restaurants have come under fire for using this chemical. ADA is also the chemical. And this is what, you know, when you look at places like McDonald's, like how many, how many kids are eating McDonald's, man? How many people are eating Subway just to try to eat fresh, you know, in their mind instead, instead of going to McDonald's. But either way, it's still just like, ugh, man, that's, that's horrible, man that allows bubbles to form inside foams and plastics like vinyl. The EU banned ADA because of its potential harmful effects on human health. Both potassium bromate, a chemical used in bread that helps it rise in the oven, and ADA have been linked to kidney and thyroid cancers in rats. So if China, Brazil, and the European Union have all banned the use of this chemical in their breads, well, why haven't the US? The fact of the matter is that the FDA just doesn't think it's dangerous. After multiple studies, it's ruled that it's not harmful. Yeah, all right. All right in humans. The question you have to ask yourself is, well, which research do you trust more and why? Number six, chlorine wash chicken. Chlorine plays many roles in the industrialized world. It's a powerful tool for cleaning water supplies, which otherwise might become contaminated and lead to the development of cholera when ingested, a disease which is extremely fatal if left untreated. But it's also used to clean other things, like chicken. Chlorine washed chicken means just that, chicken that's been washed with chlorinated water. According to most websites devoted to chicken and all things related to chicken, it's the internet, of course these websites exist, chlorine washing is a food safety practice which helps keep harmful bacteria from growing on poultry. But while the EU doesn't think that washing your poultry in chlorinated water will lead to adverse health effects, they- Sarah chlorine? Like, bro, I, I can't even get in chlorine water that's like, I can't even swim in water that's that's too has too much chlorine because I start like breaking out and getting itchy and so it's like, like to wash food in that? I don't, I just, this is like I said, strange, man, strange. Do you think it's a method of covering up poor hygiene practices? This understandably has made US exporters incredibly angry. It's like my allergies have not stopped yet. This it makes me think like well, what's making my allergies re really making it worse out here, you know? Angry as it's a decision not based in scientific evidence, but rather on paranoia. Number five, instant mashed potatoes. While the FDA will argue otherwise, the Damn it, I eat instant mashed potatoes. Seriously? The preservatives butylated hydroxyanazole, BHA, and butylated hydroxytololine found in instant mashed potatoes, and pretty much every single packaged food you buy in the US, have been known to cause some cancers in rats. They're also known to impair blood clotting when consumed in high quantities, among other symptoms like hyperactivity. BHA and BHT are used primarily to prevent foods from excreting oils. This prevents them from going rancid and extends their shelf life. And you can probably 
guess what the European Union did about this. If you guessed that they outright banned them, then congratulations, you are correct. The strange thing about the situation is that the FDA admits that BHA and BHD are probably a bit carcinogenic in nature. The FDA certified these food additives as GRAs, generally recognized as safe, but this just means that they're only regarded as safe up until a certain amount is consumed and never underwent pre-market review. Number four. I'm about to just grow my own food. Like, at this point, that's... I'm about to just get stack on seeds and just... I mean, I got a house. Might as well do it, right? You know? Uh, just grow my own food. Just be be a farmer. I always wanted to be a farmer anyway. I always loved agriculture. But I just grow, grow my own food. Seriously. I don't trust nothing. Nothing. Mountain Dew. You might be surprised to learn that your favorite lemon lime soda may contain a chemical typically used in a flame retardant. And this is an ingredient... I mean, you could just Mountain Dew, an obvious one, you know, candy, sodas, you know, those obvious right there. That has been banned in over 100 countries. The FDA tested the ingredients in Mountain Dew and found that they lacked enough conclusive data on one of its main ingredients, brominated vegetable oil, to decide whether or not it was safe to consume, although it's still labeled as GRAS. Of course, across the pond, it's a different story. Because it competes with iodine for receptor sites in the body, high levels of brominated vegetable oil in humans can lead to thyroid problems, autoimmune diseases, and potentially cancer. In fact, bromine is considered a toxin. Although brominated vegetable oil is still legal in the United States, Pepsi and Coke decided to remove the ingredient from their soft drinks after public backlash. Number three, farmed salmon. Eating salmon has all kinds of health benefits, but people consuming anything other than fresh water or organic salmon might be consuming a harmful carcinogen. The European Union has outright banned farm-raised salmon for good reason. So what exactly separates farmed salmon from freshwater salmon? Well, that's the fact that salmon that are raised on farms are typically fed an unnatural diet of grain, antibiotics, and other drugs that leave their meat an unhealthy look looking gray. Propagators of farm-raised salmon use a chemical known as astaxanthin to dye the unhealthy gray away. You're probably guessing astaxanthin has been banned in the EU due to health concerns, and you'd be right. Yeah, but how do... man, this is just... Uh, it's like, do we even trust catching it out the water anymore? Everything's so polluted and contaminated, you know? It's... Uh, uh, uh. What's more is that freshwater salmon growing up on natural food sources retains a vibrant pink quality. Number two. They do not want you to hear this. <sighs> but I guess that would be the best bet. Just go to that freshwater, you know. Go to that freshwater. It's pork. Pigs in the United States are typically given food laced with ractopamine, a growth promotion drug which helps animals remain lean. The drug basically mimics the effects of stress hormones, allowing for the production of more meat while keeping feed consumption relatively low. So what might be the problem with this? Well, the company that produces the drug, Elanco, did their own testing on the drug, and this might be a decent indicator that some corners might have been cut. Shortly after the FDA approved the drug for use in American pork products, farmers began reporting that more and more pigs became non ambulatory, which is a fancy way of saying that they can't stand or walk. These pigs tend to get treated very poorly in U.S. slaughterhouses, getting trampled and dragged by workers and electrically shocked by cattle prods in a cruel effort to get them moving again. More than 218,000 pigs are recorded as having this condition. The FDA accused Elanco of withholding information. But despite this news, the drug is still allowed in the U.S. All that's changed is a big old disclaimer listing the drug's side effects. On this one, we can't really blame the EU for banning it. Sometimes being cautious pays off. Number one, U.S. beef. Much like the EU's reasoning on banning U.S. sourced milk, meat sourced from cattle. I don't even eat pork anyway. As far as that last one, so I'm not. I'm not concerned. And either, I mean, pretty much, I don't really eat none of this stuff except for the mashed potatoes and the salmon. You know, every now and then, you know raised on growth hormones cannot be imported to the European Union. Believe it or not, this decision has resulted in a long-standing trade dispute between the US and the EU, lasting 30 years and counting. Unlike milk, however, the ban on US beef extends to six different growth hormones, with estradiol being permanently banned and five others provisionally banned. This has resulted in US retaliation in the form of tariffs on selected food imports from the EU, an action that the EU has heavily criticized. Not all US beef is banned in the EU, though. Just recently, a deal was reached to allow a certain market share for companies looking to export organic beef, but the tariffs do remain. The US claims that the EU's decision is not based on scientific evidence and that they're not treating farms that use synthetic growth hormones fairly. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching. Honestly, how I feel to really sum that video up, I feel like as far as America, they, they, they want us to keep eating stuff that's going to make us 
sick, make us unhealthy, you know, especially long term, so we could keep going into the pharmaceutical companies and, you know, keep making them wealthier and wealthier. Simple. They're going to keep lying. You know, they're going to keep making stuff up and telling us, oh, don't worry about that. You know, oh, the whole time. And then, and then you got people going and, you know, they they getting worse and then getting hooked on op opioids. And I mean, there's just so much going on in America, bro. I'm best country on earth.